Breaking headlines, ladies and gentlemen, Apple's first 5G iPhone will arrive in 2020. Read all about it, fastcompany.com, or you can just do a quick Google search. That's what I did and pulled up the first article. Let me share with you a quick excerpt from Fast Company. Several wireless carriers, including Verizon and AT&T in the United States, will initially rely on millimeter wave spectrum technology frequencies running between 28 gigahertz and 39 gigahertz. Now, folks, that's up to 39 billion hertz. The human body, on average, about 60 hertz. So multiply that by 500 million, approximately, and there you go. That hurts a lot, doesn't it? Now, to connect the first 5G phones, once again, the millimeter wave spectrum technology frequencies, Verizon and AT&T in the U.S. are going to rely on those. Now, this millimeter wave signal requires heavy lifting from the modem chips and the RF chains. This causes the release of higher than normal levels of thermal energy inside the phone. So much you can feel the heat outside of the phone. Well, you can feel it now and you don't even need 5G for that. So happens all the time. So I want to go real quick and show you the radio spectrum frequency. If you take a look at this, you can get an idea on the extreme level in the 5G range. When I say 5G, I'm referring to fifth generation. So fifth generation frequencies running in the super high frequency band and the extremely high frequency band. You can even go to the phones we have now. A lot of times the antenna relay systems are running 800 megahertz, sometimes even higher than that. So a megahertz is a million hertz. Go back to the natural body, should be around 60 hertz. So then you'd have to multiply that by 1.5 million. Now, this right here, the ultra, the ultra high frequency, where we're at now for 4G stuff, you know, television broadcasts. Your microwave oven, when you put something in the microwave. Microwave devices, communications, radio astronomy, mobile phones, wireless LAN, Bluetooth. If we get into the super high frequencies, now we're talking 5G, and that's SHF, extremely high frequencies, EHF. You know, as it said earlier, 39 gigahertz, so that's bringing you into that spectrum as well. So let's look at some of the technologies that use these high frequencies. Radio astronomy, microwave devices, and communications, wireless LAN, communication satellites, cable and satellite television broadcasting, amateur radio, satellite radio, and then the EHF, radio astronomy, high frequency microwave radio relay, microwave remote sensing, Directed energy weapons. Directed energy weapons. So when people say they feel that 5G could also be used as some type of thought control mechanism or a directed energy weapon mechanism, that's going to be based on how, many, how much power is being pushed with these frequencies. Because I've talked to experts about 5G that feel it's totally safe. And, you know, I had, a, I had a healthy discussion and debate. I didn't agree with everything that gentleman said, and I still respect and appreciate his opinion. And he's very knowledgeable. So, and we'll talk about it again. I'll, I'll have him on the, on the show again. But when I look at these frequencies, you know, 30 to 300 gigahertz directed energy weapons... What happens if there's some type of hacking? I mean, what if there's some bad guys out there that, that find a way to hack into one of these towers? Could they then use it as a weapon? I mean, just like you've got hackers always doing stuff um, on the webs. You know, corporations get hacked into all the time. China hacks into, into our computers. I'm sure we've hacked into their computers, etc., you know, on the higher levels, Department of Defense, etc. So 
then what happens if they can start hacking into 5G frequencies? Could, could they then manipulate people's emotions and thoughts and feelings? And this is microwave weapons. These are directed energy weapons. And this is some of the stuff that's been talked about in experimental stages. And if they're talking about the experimental stages, you know, some might speculate they're much further down the road in advancements than what they're letting us on to know about, anyway, what they're letting us see. Active denial systems, a millimeter wave source that heats the water in a human target skin and thus causes incapacitating pain. So the difference between that and a 5G antenna that uses millimeter wave technology to relay information is the amount of power that's being projected in that frequency. That's still pretty spooky, folks. U.S. Air Force, in my opinion, U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory and Raytheon using riot control duty equipment with this active denial system millimeter wave technology. I wonder what the frequency is on that. I wonder how high that frequency is. So although some devices are labeled as microwave weapons, the microwave range is commonly defined as being between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz, in, which is in the RF range. These frequencies, having wavelengths of 1 to 1,000 micrometers, some of these weapons are publicized. What's the Vigilant Eagle? A proposed airport defense system that directs high-frequency microwaves towards any projectile that is fired at an aircraft. Now, this is the schematics for global atmospheric model. And this is not showing what a 5G grid would look like, but I'm just using this as a visual. Imagine an electromagnetic frequency spectrum that covers the entire planet. And these frequencies are very high, microwave frequencies, you know, extremely high frequencies. Could they then say, okay, section five, grid 12, you know, like block 60 there or something. So they could have a number for each section. Each grid has a number and they could go lock in that sequence. They could change the minds. They could use this around the world in a way. If I'm just, I'm just thinking, is this a way for them to be able to do that if they turn up the frequencies? So yeah, we're just going to use it for communications, but if somebody steps out of line, bang, down, microwave beams. Schematics, incredible. So somatics, what are somatics? Somatics are frequencies where you can manipulate matter with sound. Throw a bunch of sand on a piece of paper, hit a Tibet bowl, bang, and watch what kind of frequency you get. And that's going to be linked on the, or I'm sorry, watch what kind of pattern you get, and that's going to be linked to the frequency, the sound. So this is actually just a high-quality volume rendering of the atmosphere simulation at a global scale based on the geodisc grid. The colored strips indicate the simulated atmosphere, vorticity strength based on GCRM models, or the GCRM model. Somatics, wave, a subset of modern modal vibrational phenomena. The term was coined by Hans Jenny. This is what 1480 hertz looks like. I'll leave the links in the video description box. 